Hello there, Andrew here for a hopefully quick episode of the Thousand Dollar Car Guy. So I recently bought two Ford Festivas. Uh, one had been immobilized for the last three years. That's this guy, old Mossy. And then another one in the back there. We got that one running yesterday. And today we're going to dive into uh, removing and replacing the fuel pump. I figured since I have another one that I know works perfectly well, I can just steal that one to see if it fixes the problem for this one. We know we're not getting enough fuel because we were able to start it with starter fluid yesterday. So this is how you remove a fuel pump in a 1990 Ford Festiva. First thing you need to do is get into the back of the car and then you're going to need to remove this lower seat bracket and it's two 14 millimeter bolts. Get those out. You then pull up on the two tabs, one there and one there. Fold the seat forward and then fold it forward once more. If your seats are far enough forward, you now have access to the retainer bolts which are on either side. So you can go ahead and take those two out. These nuts are also 14 millimeter. You can now lift up on the seat assembly on both sides and then pull it out through one of the doors. Luckily it's not very heavy. Up next is the carpet. So I don't remember if it's on this side or this side, but either way, it's got these little, uh, and the same thing is you would have on any kind of interior trim holding a panel in, but you gotta get up underneath of these and pop them all loose. So best of luck. Um, they do make trim removal pieces that do this, that are made of plastic, or you can take a putty knife and wedge it underneath. So once I get all these up, I'll check back in. So after you pop up the whole line of them, you should be able to take the lower half, and slide it out from underneath, try not to break it. But we are working with some old carpet in here. And then hopefully flip it forward, exposing all the ants underneath. Oh boy. So we gotta get it out from that side too, over the bolt. And there's our fuel pump, covered in ants. Once you've exposed the nougaty goodness of your fuel pump assembly, it's going to be four Phillips head screws to remove that bracket. Underneath you have that one electrical connection, you just have to push down the tab and pull it out. So now we have total access to the pump. You've got your inlet and your return hoses there. You need to use a set of pliers to crimp the clamp together and then slide it back or slide it forwards and then you should be able to pull the hoses off. Remember not to get them mixed up. If you have to, label them. Remember there's going to be fuel in this system so don't forget about that. <laughs> Make sure to be in a well-ventilated area, and don't surround yourself with any sparks. We also have our battery disconnected. It would be a smart decision to have a bucket ready. I had no idea there was going to be that much fuel in here. But you should know that now, so... You're going to want to take your time removing this hose. There's a good chance it's going to be super brittle from how old it is. After you're sure you've got no fumes left in the car, make sure to be extra careful when removing these. Normally it's recommended to use brass tools so that they don't create a spark. I don't have any, so we're just going to try and be real careful. There's going to be eight very small Phillips head screws around the outer perimeter of it. Uh, remove them and you should be able to pull the whole assembly right out the top. Gonna try and move our hoses as far out of the way as we can. Maybe to the right, maybe to the left, whichever works better for you. Try not to get gasoline in your eyes. Ah! And we're back. And of course, now I'm wearing the safety glasses. Anywho, uh, let's pull this thing out and take a look see.
that is far more rusty than I ever expected to see. That's a whole lot of rust. I mean, it's possible we just have like a bad ground connection compared to the pump being bad. We'll have to try and bench test this some way if we can. But my plan is to take one out of a good running car that I already have, pop it all back in place, and then see if it runs from there. So this is the filter I just dug out of the non-running Festivus fuel tank. When I pulled up the good running fuel pump, it had a really nice new fuel pump and a really nice new filter. And this is what was laying at the bottom of the tank on old Mossy here. So uh, inside this mess is, you know, the whole mechanism to hold this, what was a filter. So I'm very curious to find out if it was just completely clogged. Not really sure. Uh, but it was preventing me from putting in the new fuel pump because it couldn't go low enough because it was hitting this when it was trying to touch the bottom. So I'm just about to put the new good running fuel pump in and see what happens from there. It's a bit of a fine dance to get the pump back in there. I'm sure it's not as difficult as others can be, but just take your time. Try not to force anything. If you're forcing it, you're doing it wrong. I start with the float. Get that in a corner, then drop the bag in, then the pump itself, and there's a couple of claws that you have to be in mind of. Move your hoses out of the way so you can get to the right spot. Make sure not to pinch anything, of course. And try and line up your holes. That should be it right there. I'm going to go ahead and start all the screws and get this thing tightened up. I'm not going to snug them up until we get all of them in. And there is a gasket material between here, so make sure that the gasket itself is located so you're not trying to thread through rubber because that's not going to work out too well for you. Let's just cut to the end. We got all our screws tightened. It's time to put the hoses back on and the hose clamps. Don't just put the hoses on. Oh, trying to be very careful with some of these old lines. Well, as careful as I can be. This one's a real tight bend though. Good. We'll go ahead and tighten up our hose clamps. Alrighty, I probably don't have to do this for testing porpoises only, but I am going to reconnect everything completely just to avoid any sort of future problems. And then we'll put this blast container back over top just in case for my safety. So we got everything back together. The only thing left to do now is to plug in the battery and see if it starts. And the only problem I'm going to have is this is possibly three-year-old gas. Oh well. Now you see why she's called old Mossy. <laughs> Alright, let's see if this big dog starts. So she doesn't start just yet. Just in case people are curious, this uh, fusible link right here, the EGI, that's what controls your fuel pump. Uh, I just took this off, kind of cleaned it up a little bit. We'll see if that makes a change. I just wanted to have it on film just in case it did. So you saw it, it coughed there for a second. I'm going to get some starter fluid and spray it in the intake and see if we can kind of clean out the spark plugs. I think I just fouled them really bad. <laughs> Try and start it again. We're probably dealing with horrific gas. That's my guess. Well, there you have it. It runs, terrible. I think it's the three-year-old gas. So, just as a check for myself, because you're probably done watching this episode at this point, I'm going to go ahead and throw the quote-unquote bad fuel pump into the good car and then see if that one runs off of it. If it does, it means that my pump's not bad, it's just bad gas. So, I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, 15, 20 minutes later, whatever it is, I got the bad pump in the good running Festiva 
Battery's all hooked up again. I only have one battery, so I gotta share it between both of them. Anyway, I'm gonna try and start it up. And if it runs, then the pump's obviously not bad. There it is, conclusive. We had a bad pump in the original car and that bad three-year-old gas. It did run, but it didn't want to. That was at full throttle. So I think the next thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and drain out all the bad gas in the other Festiva, swap these pumps back over so that I can go ahead and drive this beauty right here. And then that's gonna wrap up this episode. I hope it helped you get through the meat of the problem if you need to replace your fuel pump. Otherwise, it's just a whole bunch of nonsense that you just sat through. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next episode of Thousand Dollar Car Guy. Well, just in case anyone was wondering, I got her all put back together. And at least it still runs. So, I got that accomplished.